Make sure you don't get your feet wet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that thing should be peeing for about an hour. Yeah. Why was this boat full of water? And just to clarify, this is not my boat. And keep watching this video to find out what's next for this boat. Because there actually is a future for this boat, I, I think. A lot of people probably saw the very short video that I put out about this boat showing hundreds of gallons of water coming out of the bilge as we we're pulling it out. Pulling out your drain plug is important to do whenever you're taking your boat out, especially when you have a boat like this one here that's probably got about, I don't know, two or three hundred gallons worth of water in the bilge. Many, many minutes later. Now, I did not make that video with any context, so a lot of people didn't understand exactly how it got so much water in it, and they jumped to conclusions for how it got water in it. Some of the commenters on that video talked about forgetting to put the drain plug in or having a major breach in the hull or any other kind of thing that would cause all that water to come into the boat. But reality is, all that water came in the boat from rain. Luckily, what we were able to do is on a beautiful cold December day, when it was a weekday and nobody else was at the marina, we were able to carefully, manually bring the boat out of its boat slip and bring it up onto his trailer and let the water out. We weren't holding up other boaters, we weren't pouring oil all over the boat ramp, and we didn't gouge a hole in the ground by running water on there. Most of that stuff was me shooting a little bit of video while we're in those spots, but we were checking things out. That water was all clean, it wasn't oily, so we weren't oiling up the ramp. In that video, it shows the boat driving away. The boat wasn't driving away, we were just driving farther up to be able to drain water out somewhere else where we would not be in the way if anybody else did happen to come down to the marina. And when we were letting the water out on a gravelly area, we filled that little hole back in again. It was just a tiny little hole anyway that we made from running the water in that one spot for a few minutes. Let me share with you what actually happened with this boat. This boat belongs to a friend of mine and he put it in the marina where he stores his boat. Last June, I believe, is whenever he finally launched it for the season. Over the winter before, he had re-bottom painted it. So this was all clean and nice and pristine. And his engine was running great and everything like that. So he used the boat a few times over the summer, but near the end of the summer, he went out one time and his engine just quit. Now this has a big old Yamaha two-stroke on the back of it. I think it's a 225 or 200, not really sure. He was able to get it back to the marina and he put it in his boat slip. Tied it all off, checked everything, and planned to go back down there to take care of his boat at a future time. Now, a lot of people can talk about proper boat maintenance and making sure you take care of your boat and everything like that, but sometimes life gets in the way. And for him, life got in the way and he didn't get down there. And basically what happened is we had a lot of rain, an awful lot of rain. And we had a couple of very, very torrential rainstorms that lasted for several days. During one of those rainstorms, the best that we can figure out is that his bilge pump was running a whole bunch and we're not sure if maybe the battery quit first or the bilge pump float switch quit first. Either way, at some point in time, both his battery was dead and his bilge pump wasn't working anymore. And by the time he got a chance to get down there to check on his boat, it was very full of water. Yes, there are ways that you can absolutely prevent this kind of thing from happening, but without actually living on your boat 24 seven and having all of the spare parts and batteries with you at all times, you can't 100% guarantee that your boat's going to stay afloat and in good condition. Oh, and hey, if you're liking this video, be sure to give it a like down below. It actually really helps me. Of course, there are lots of things that we can do to prevent this type of thing from happening because you don't ever want to go down to the marina and find your boat full of water. But it does happen even with people who do a lot of preventative care and maintenance and check on their boat regularly because once the bilge pump fails, it fails. And if we're in a big, big rainstorm, then the boat can get water in it very quickly. The last big boat that I had, had actually half sunk at the marina, probably about a year or so before I bought it because the bilge pump had failed. 
And it happens. Even if you check your bilge pump every week and make sure your batteries are topped up, those things can fail, which is why the number one thing to do is obviously checking on your boat. And of course, testing your pumps and your batteries and things like that whenever you do check your boat, making sure that there's nothing leaking and that everything's working. Batteries are charged and pumps are working. That way you've done everything you can before something terrible happens like your boat sitting in the marina with hundreds of gallons of water on board, like this one had. But the reality is that this boat didn't sink. Yes, it was sitting low in the marina. Yes, it had a lot of water on board, but it didn't sink. Most of the water was down in the front cabin. And believe it or not, more boats sink or half sink then you would realize, yes, we don't ever want it to happen to our boats, and many of us get very lucky and it doesn't happen to our boats. But it can happen, and that's how a boat can end up with hundreds of gallons of water in it. And as far as why this boat was so dirty when we pulled it out, well, this boat is kept in a marina that's just off of the Chesapeake Bay. And if any of you have ever stored a boat in a bay or an estuary, kept it in a marina for a season, at least around here, they're covered in growth. When I sold my boat over the summer, it had only been in my marina for three months, tops, and I was using it. And when I went to take it out, to put it on the trailer, whenever the person went to buy it, they were like, wow, this boat is really grungy. And it was super clean when it went into the marina. That's just the way it is around here. This type of water, the boats get really, really gunky really quickly. So that's completely normal. It's not like there was anything done wrong to care for this boat or maintain this boat. That's just the way it is around here in the Chesapeake Bay area. Let me know if you have similar experiences with keeping your boat in brackish or salt water. You know, how quickly does it get dirty in the marina? So what's next for this boat? We actually went to Rhode Island a couple weeks ago to go pick up another outboard. It's another Yamaha two-stroke, great big outboard. I believe that's outboard's a 250 horsepower. I'm gonna pop that on the back here and hook everything up or whatever, and then he's gonna go through everything in this boat. You know, replace the bilge pump, check all the batteries, replace what needs to be replaced to be able to make it seaworthy again. But not being able to check on our boat and neglect, not being able to care for our boat and the calendar just slipping away from us that's what can really hurt these boats. And unlike a car, which can just sit in our driveway for six months and not start and just basically have a dead battery, with a boat, when you leave it sitting in the water for six months without it running, much worse things can happen. And luckily for him, much worse things didn't happen. The boat was only half sunk. So there you go. That's why this boat was full of water when we pulled it out. And it wasn't because we had failed to put the drain plug in or that there was any major holes in it or we had run over anything in the water. Nope, it was mostly rainwater from just sitting in the marina for months with a broken bilge pump. Anyway, YouTube has another video for you. It's right here. Be sure to check this one out. Let me know if you've had any experiences with your boat almost sinking in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.